Hey there, thank you for joining us for Obi-Wan Online. Man, we're so glad that you're with us today. Hey, I'm going to start out with some tr transparency and just say this. I've had times in my life where I, you know, wondered, can I really be of have help to someone? D do I have what it takes to really make a difference? Or how about this one? It's like, man, will I, will I make things worse? Uh, man, they, they, see, they, see, they seem at such a different place. How will my feeble attempts really, really help? Man, I've never been through this before, but, but they're looking for, like, my help? Have, have you ever felt similar to me where you wanted to help a friend? You just didn't know how. You, you wanted to be there for a family member, but didn't want your attempt to fall flat. Or again, like I said, you don't want to make it worse. You, you hate seeing them that way, but you feel helpless wondering if you're qualified or have what it takes to help and make a difference. One of the things that makes us feel like we may not be of much use is when we face our own darkness. How can I help when I'm still working through my own struggles? Another thing that makes us feel like we may not be of much use is when we don't struggle with the darkness someone else is going through. It's like, how, how do I help this situation? How do I even relate to what they're going through? Uh, here's another barrier we face. Man, I, I don't have all the answers. I don't know enough. Uh, let, me, let me give you the theme of the message up front. When someone is hurting, oftentimes we think that someone needs our logic or our thoughts. As you'll see throughout this message, what they really need is our emotional help. What they really need is you. You see, you see what's happening, though? I struggle. I can't help. I don't struggle. I can't help. I don't have all the answers. I don't know enough. I can't help either. If everyone was to feel that way, nobody would help but the professionals. And as we've said throughout this series, some need a professional. That said, everyone needs a friend. And yes, you, you can be that friend. Whether it's a mental or emotional struggle or another type of struggle that keeps someone in the dark, everyone struggles with something. The truth is you can bring hope to their dark. I want you to do something right now. Think of the person in your life that is struggling or has struggled before that you wanted to help. Yes, you, you can bring hope to your friend, to your spouse, to your family member, to your kid. Heck, any person that God puts in your path. So with our remaining time, let's talk about some things we can do to bring hope. We're going to take a look at a snapshot of a person's life named Job. He, he went through one of the worst multiple tragedies that you can think of. Within a few moments, he lost much of his livelihood, his possessions, and all of his kids. His life was instantly in crisis. Talk about a bad day. Any one of these would have been tragic enough to face in one lifetime, let alone three in one day. Could you imagine how abrupt and dark it would feel if you lost your livelihood, your possessions, and all of your kids just within a few moments? Imagine waking up, and by the end of the day, before your head hits the pillow, you lose almost everything. If all of that wasn't bad enough, Job's health takes a horrible turn for the worse. He was covered in very painful sores. In fact, let's read about it. In Job 2, it says this. It says they, they covered him from the bottom of his feet. And it doesn't say from the bottom of his feet to the top of his feet. It's the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. He got out a part of a broken pot. He used it to scrape his skin. He did it while he was sitting on ashes. ashes. Picture this. Imagine being in so much pain that you're taking broken pottery and scraping your skin. Job was in a very dark place in multiple ways. Now three of his friends find out what 
has happened to him, and, and they're concerned. That, that's awesome. They're his friends. They, they want to help. Let's pick up the story from there. In Job 2, it says this. When they got closer to where he lived, they could see him. Listen to this, though. But they could hardly recognize him. That's how bad this was. They began to weep out loud. They tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat down on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. This is so important. Listen to this. No one said a word to him. That's because they saw how much he was suffering. Man, if you're going to be someone that brings uh, hope to someone's dark, whether, whether that's a friend, a, a family member, a spouse, kid, or you know, whoever, number one, just be there. Just be there. I know that sounds so simple, but it can be very powerful and helpful. Job's friends just sat there with him and didn't say a word. You know, there, there, was, a, there was a moment that I want to share with you, and I, I really, I, I don't recall what was happening with me, but my daughter, Corey, must have been uh, sensing something with me because she comes up to me, she puts her hand on my face, and she looks at me and she says, that's okay, Daddy, it's me, Corey. It's like, man, who, could, who can beat that? I mean, who can beat that, people? Anyway, when someone is at a dark place, presence matters. I'm not saying it's the only thing that matters, but it matters more than we think. And I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons we don't feel like we can help is because we've never been through it ourselves. Now, I get it. There are definitely benefits to being able to relate to someone's dark place. Sure, that can be true. That said, just because you haven't gone through it doesn't mean you can't sit with someone in their dark. If you don't feel like you understand where they're at, hear this, I, I don't suggest using your words a lot. Just like Job's friends, they didn't say a word. They just sat with him. Now, when they used their words later, they actually did more harm than good. And we're going to talk about that soon. But even if you can't relate, you can still be with someone and be a listening ear. Because what people need is to know that they're not alone, that they, that they have someone that cares, and someone that's listening. I, I mentioned another reason we don't feel like we can help is when we struggle ourselves. Working through your struggles doesn't, dis hear this, it doesn't disqualify you. If anything, it helps you be more effective for others. Look at this picture that's going to be on the screen of this cop. There, there's this cop that, that uh, uh, he struggles, that you probably can't read the text, but he struggles with depression. And, but he's he personally talked more than 200 people um, uh, off of jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. D did you hear that? This person struggles with depression, and he's talked more than 200 people out of doing so off of the Golden Gate, Gate Bridge. He struggles. But in some ways, who better than him to help people through emotional and mental struggles? Same with you. Same with you. I love how Pastor Rick Warren says it. He says, our greatest hurt can turn into our greatest ministry. Here's what he's saying. Our greatest hurt can turn into the greatest way we can help others. You know, in some ways, what better person to help than you? You've been through it. And to some extent, you're going to understand where they're at. Step in. It may feel uncomfortable, but it can be such a help to the person struggling. Just be there. And for those of you that feel you have to have answers or I, you just don't know enough, do you, do you see that your logic or thoughts isn't what's needed? You are needed. Be there. Now, Job's friends sitting with him for a week and is pretty, and not, and not saying a word, is pretty much where their effectiveness stopped. After this, they tried to explain away why, why Job was going through what he went through by saying that it, was, it must have been his fault. Now, 
let's not paint the wrong picture. These were Job's friends. They're not his enemies. They cared about the Job, so their intentions were good, but it didn't help. Job and his friends were going back and forth, and here are a couple of his replies. In, in Job 16, it says this. Job replied, I've heard many of these things before. I want you to listen for what Job's looking for. All of you are terrible at comforting me. Did you hear what he's looking for? And then listen to what he says next. Your speeches go on forever. Won't they ever end? What's wrong with you? And then in Job 17, he says, my spirit is crushed and my life is nearly snuffed out. The grave is ready to receive me. If you're going to be someone that helps and brings hope in someone's dark, whether it's a friend, a spouse, someone else, family member, number two, avoid the quick fix. It's so important to avoid the quick fix. See, Job's friends cared about him, but they weren't helping. And when we're helping a family member or friend, it's so important. Man, I, I can't emphasize enough. It's so important to avoid the quick fix, even when we have a great heart and our goal is comfort. It can't be a quick fix. I, I get it. We don't want them to suffer any longer. But it's you, what we have to realize it's usually a process to get out. There was a great invention that has happened in the history of man that has made things a lot easier. And it is, what is it? It is the microwave. Yes! It has made things so much e easier, right? Uh, I know you probably can't see it, but you probably already know because most of us have microwaves up here in the corner. It says, the, it's the popcorn button, baby. Popcorn, microwave popcorn was born because of the microwave. And just in a couple minutes, and you don't want to go too many minutes so it doesn't burn, but woohoo, microwave popcorn was born with the microwave, right? TV dinners were born with, with the microwave, right? And so easy. All you have to do is get it out of the box or get it out of the bag. You stick it in here. You push a button. A couple minutes later, voila. Takes so much work, effort, and time out of the process. Now, while it's cool to have a microwave, would you rather have some chili out of a can through the microwave or would you rather have some homemade chili that's cooked in one of these? Yes, the slow cooker, right? Right? Some of you are like, no, I want it out of the can from the microwave. Hey, to each his own. Would you rather eat some chicken that you can microwave or would you rather eat a piece of chicken or steak that has been marinated on one of these? Yes, the grill, right? Now, how many, how many steak people do we have? Let me see your hands through the screen. How many steak people do we have? How, how many chicken people do we have? Are, are there any tofu people out there? If you're the tofu person, God help you. No, no, I, I, actually, I mean, God bless you. I, I'm just having fun with you guys. Anyway, why do most people, why do most people prefer food in a slow cooker or on a grill? It tastes better. It's better quality. You see, we end up deferring to the microwave at times to save time. It's a quick fix to eating when we don't have enough time. And while it's not bad to do it when it comes to eating, hear this, it's so important, it can be very damaging when we attempt to quick fix a person. And in our attempt to bring a quick fix, we can say things that end up doing more harm than good, like, you'll be fine, just be happy. How can you be struggling? Your life seems fine, or it could be worse, at least it's not Fill in the blank of whatever you want to put in. You see, while well-intentioned, sometimes these can cause harm. When, when someone's at a deep place, hear this, they just can't flip a switch. Okay, because you said it, now I'm happy. It just doesn't usually work that way because it can seem like you're invalidating their pain or struggle. Uh, sometimes when we chase the quick fix, we even say... 
truthful things that can still bring harm. Well, God is still good. Can I just respectfully ask, what does God being good have to do with someone being in pain? The worst pain I've ever had, I mentioned it in this series before, my kidney stone pain. Someone could continue to shout, God's still good, God's still good, and I'm going to be like, I'll show you God's still good, right? Um, That doesn't mean I still wouldn't experience the physical pain. How about this one? Well, at least you won't have to face this in heaven. True, and I get why someone may say it, But this can sound to someone like we're ignoring their present pain. Uh, Let's pretend uh, that when uh, Robin was in labor and all the pain that she was going through, uh, when she was laboring over bringing our kids into this world, if, if my response to her in our pain is, Robin, you will not have to face this pain in heaven, right? I may not be around anymore if, if that was my, hey, at least you want to, hey, you big baby, at least you won't have to face this in heaven. Like, I probably, I may not be around anymore. My whole point, even with truth, we have to be careful when people are hurting. Even when we have good inf- intentions, quick fixes, and quick answers typically don't help. We need to realize that it's a process and could last a while. If the person needs answers and you're in over your head, instead of quick fixes, offer to help them find a professional. Once you find one, offer to go with them so they don't have to go alone. But do you see once again how logic can be very damaging when people are hurting? Be there for them, but avoid the quick fix. Uh, There's something that Job says that's pretty revealing about what he wants from his friends. And we read it earlier, and I tried to make it obvious. You, You probably already know. But because he's in pain, because he's in a dark place, he wants them to comfort him. That's it. You see, comfort is different than quick fixes or quick answers. Let's go to the Bible to see what we can do. It says this in Romans 12. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. So number three, if you're going to be someone that brings help and hope to someone that you care about, number three, empathize. Empathize. God asks us to mourn with people who mourn. And and why does he do that? It's not like God's goal is for us to be pulled low all the time. He doesn't want us to be stuck in the dark too, but he knows, hear this, he knows that inner pain can lessen when others show sympathy. And that's one of the reasons he asks us to empathize. It's putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. Again, I'll say it again, Job's friends weren't bad people. They really did care, but they weren't helping. Maybe if they would have put themselves in Job's shoes. Hey, how would I feel if I lost all of my kids? Would I be over it yet? Man, how would I respond if my whole body was in pain? If someone was saying to me what I'm saying to them, would it help? Please listen, really, if there's one thing you get out of this message, I hope it's this next part, but please listen because I, I believe this can be effective when, in helping you care about others and people that you care about. Oftentimes, we use logic to help. Logic is good and, and is eventually needed. Usually, though, what's needed when someone's in a dark place is emotional help. This is why God asked us to mourn with those who mourn. It's examining where someone is at on an emotional level. It's asking yourself, hey, how would I respond if I was in their shoes? It's connecting with them on an emotional level, not logically giving a principle or trying to fix it. It's it's things like, man, I hate that for you. That must be really tough. I can tell that you're in a lot of pain. You see, I believe emotional help can be very undervalued because we often think we need the answers. And again, don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying answers aren't important, 
they are. That said, when someone's in the dark, what they often need is emotional connection, and it's usually for longer than we think. And when we empathize, it gives us a better chance to give them what they need, which is comfort. Listen in to what it says in the Bible. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father, and the, this is so cool, listen in, and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. Because God simply cares about us, he wants to comfort us. Of course he does. But, but one of the other reasons he comforts is so that we can comfort others. It's why it's so important for us to ask ourselves, is what I'm about to say or do, would that really help me if I was in the same situation? Or would it just feel cliche or even cold to me? See, if you don't, and if I'll even go here, if you don't feel like putting yourself in their shoes is helping, don't give up. Don't give up. Ask questions. Things like, that must be tough. Can you tell me more about it? Also, it's okay not to know what to do. You could say something like, man, thanks for sharing. I, I really do hate that for you. I, I can tell you're in pain. How, how can I help you? You see, instead of guessing, ask them how you can be most helpful. Because comfort doesn't mean have we, that we have all the answers. That's often what quick fixes try to accomplish. Comfort is being there with them in the pain. Also, if you're a Christ follower and you don't know what to do or say, you have the Holy Spirit in, in you and, it's, and by your side. And God tells us in the Bible that when we need wisdom to ask, and he, he won't even, fall, fa, 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 he won't even fall, uh, find fault with us, and he, he'll give it to us freely. See, he can help us have emotional connection as well as logic. And speaking of logic, let me address it a little bit more. Uh, logic is awesome, and it's needed. And I, I've said that a couple times because I'm, I'm not bashing logic. It's just not often the first thing or even the thing that's needed for a while when someone's in their dark. They often need the emotional connection. And it takes a lot of discernment and asking God, are they ready for these practical steps? Because logic can come across as callous and cold. And we can accidentally use logic in ways that we shouldn't. Now, let me explain Sometimes when we use logic at the wrong time, sometimes we use logic at the wrong time because we grow impatient. We're done with the situation, so we throw out an answer. Or we think to ourselves, man, they still can't be struggling, can they? Now, there are lots of struggles, but for example, let me say this about depression. As someone has said before, people don't usually fake being depressed. They fake being okay. Did you hear that? People don't usually fake being depressed. They fake being okay. If they're struggling, they most likely are. Also, it's not about if we're done. Remember, we're not trying to microwave people. It's about if they're ready for it. Here's a big clue on when people are ready. If they ask you for, their th for your thoughts. If they ask, Share some logic and thoughts with them. If they don't, continue to be there for them and empathize. And it's just like, God, give me the patience I need to continue to be helpful in the ways that they need it. Help me to be like a grill or slow cooker. Uh, another way we can accidentally use logic in a way we shouldn't is when we're trying to be right. And can I say, it's not always about being right. It's about helping others. I, I get it. I know. It can be so tempting to say these four words. We have to bite our tongues. I get it. And the four words, I told you so. I told you so. May we not lose our kindness or empathy for others 
just to prove we're right. It's often not about if we're right or not. It's about letting others know that you and Jesus are with them through it, in the dark, in their pain. You see, when people can trust that you can connect with them emotionally, sometimes they'll be more apt to trust you logically. And it takes this discernment to know when they need emotional support versus tools that will move them out of the dark. And one way we gain that discernment is by empathizing, uh, empathizing, putting ourselves in their shoes, once again asking, what would I need if I was in their shoes? God, you know them best. What do they need from me right now? God, give me empathy. When someone confides in you that they're hurting and, and your brain is churning and you're asking yourself, what can I say, what can I say, what can I say, how can I fix this, what, what, what can I do? Remember, that's not the question. The better question is, how can I empathize? How can I empathize? That's what you need to be asking when your brain is churning. When they're hurting, unless they ask, they, they may not need your logic. They need you. You see the difference. They need your emotional help, and they need to, you to let them be human. You know, uh, one reason Obi-Wan started uh, in, uh, uh, Impact the 619 is that it's one of our solutions to bringing hope to those in our city that are in dark places, to let others know that there are people that care and that there's a God that cares about them in their dark seasons. And we have a few different, if you'd like, we have a few different opportunities you can be a part of. We, we thank local heroes in our community, people like lifeguards or firefighters. We have a ministry for seniors at the Golden Living Center in Point Loma. We have an anti-trafficking ministry to help fight against human trafficking in San Diego. We also have a potential coming soon ministry. We, we hope to eventually have a presence at the San Diego Central Jail. And so if you're interested in being a part or getting more info, we're actually having a celebration dessert this Saturday at 6.30 p.m. in our church's venue just to, to celebrate some of the things that God has done so far through Impact the 619. Man, this could be a great way to get connected to the things uh, with, in, with impact. If you can't come Saturday but want more info, please text IMPACT to the number that you, that you see on the screen. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this as well. Even if you don't feel led to be a part of IMPACT the 619, you have friends and family members that are either at a dark place or will be at a dark place. Think of the person again that I asked you to at the beginning that's either struggled or is struggling. I know you want to help them. Why? Because you, you care about them. Don't think that you can't just because you've gone through it or if you have struggles yourself. Be there for them. Avoid the quick fix and empathize. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much. Jesus, we thank you so much that you're someone that, that empathizes with us. And, and I, I pray, God, that I pray for these people in our lives that, that we've been thinking about throughout this message, that, that we want to help them. Would you, would you show us, God, how to be there for them. Sh sh show us when, when to avoid those quick fixes. It's just like, no, 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 no. We're not going to microwave people here. Show us how to empathize, God, with, with others. I, I, I pray that you would uh, give confidence to my friends that, that, that you really can help them be there for other people. It doesn't mean they have all the answers or they're going to be able to do everything. Or uh, it, it just means that they can, they can still be there. And, and God, I, I pray for the people that they're even concerned about right now, that you would, that you would send all the help in their life that they need, that, that, they would even, that they would also latch on to you. And speaking of latching on to you, Jesus, if, the, if there's anyone 
watching today and, you, and you've never given your life to Jesus before. But today can be the day. It's, it's actually quite simple. It's just saying something to the effect of, and you can say it right now if you want to, Jesus, I, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. Forgive me for those things. Be my leader. I trust you. I believe in you. It's, it's you and me. And God, for all of my friends, would you give them the, the confidence that they need, even when it feels awkward at times and they, they're, they're feeling that temptation, I just don't know what to do. God, you know what to do and you know how to guide them and show them that they can be there for them and show them how they can empathize. Thank you, God, that you have trusted us to help others. And ultimately, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for helping us. We love you for it. Thank you so much. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, this concludes our series, Hope in the Dark. We hope it's been so hopeful and helpful for you. Hey, uh, take a minute to check out our new, brand new summer series that's starting next week. Hey, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.